in a day, uh, approximately, I talk to 35 to 40 users, which in a week is, I guess, 180 to 200. And in a month, that sums up to 700 uh, requests. And until now, <coughs> with Automatic, I've dealt with 5,000 requests so far. And one request that keeps on repeating is, <laughs> no. uh, one request that keeps on repeating is, uh, how do I earn more revenue? How do I monetize my site? I want to earn money from it which is why I thought it's nice to talk about it, and I'm here to share my thoughts on that. So, yeah. Uh, I want everyone to look at this picture. Uh, I come from India, a country who is obsessed with cricket. <laughs> so I picked this example. Uh, for some of you who don't know, he is ex-captain of Indian cricket team, MS Dhoni. Now, I want you to focus on this image and notice that he has a lot of uh, company logos on his T-shirt and on his bat. Now I want. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Now I want to ask you all uh, why he has so many stickers and not me. What I have is just WooCommerce that is a product of my company. But he definitely doesn't work for ASL. He def doesn't work for Gulf. But he still has all of them. Can can anyone tell me why? Why there's a difference? Why I don't have those stickers, but he does. Why he's so lucky? Sorry? Yeah, exactly. He's famous. He has more fans. When I do my day job, no one is looking at me. When he does his day job, when he's playing, he has millions of people looking at him. And that is why advertisers, companies are interested in showing their logo on his t-shirt because indirectly they you are not viewing him but you are also viewing airsel and that is why we are talking about it we're talking about airsel we are talking about gulf we're talking about others and it's not just his t-shirt but his pants that has vgn on it his bat has logos on it his sleeves uh, both the sleeves has different logos on it so like two on this side two on the other side so there's a lot of advertisement that is done when he's, he plays. And it is just because he's famous, he has fans. Okay, I'll, I'll do some of this here. And that is why. So advertisements earn good revenue. And this is said over and over again. But I'm going to tell you, you're not going to earn good revenue of advertisements if you don't have enough traffic. So you need good traffic on your side, you need more viewers on your side if you have to earn revenue out of it. Another point that comes in advertisement is having relevant ads on your site. If, you're, if your blog is about food and your uh, <coughs> ads are about fashion, uh, fashion cosmetics, it doesn't really make sense. So having relevant ads on your site is very important. Next point is ad placement. So yeah, it's pretty visible. So where can you place your ads? It's very important. First thing, uh, you can place it in the header at the top of your site. Uh, then you have sidebar where you can place uh, your ads. You have content area. Now in content area, there are two ways you can add. You can add uh, advertisements within your content, and you can add advertisements at the bottom of your content. I'll come back to this. Uh, and again, you can add in the footer area. And the last way is, to have pop-up advertisements, which is something that you should never, ever have. <laughs> because it's very off-putting when someone visits your site and is interested in your content and you bombard them with advertisements. They are not here for advertisements. And in a process of earning good revenue, you might end up losing that viewer. Um, now talking about the content area. I would really recommend having advertisements at the bottom. Because uh, as a user, I really f uh, lose my focus when I'm reading your content. And in this center, I have advertisements. So it breaks my link. So it is something I would suggest. But many people add ads uh, in the center of the content as well. And that is perfectly fine. It works for folks, but I will personally say don't add it. Uh, yeah, next thing is affiliate marketing. So. Basically, I have some pro products that I sell, and I'll approach you. Please uh, 
recommend my products on your site and I'll, I'll give you some commission or I may give you some products of mine for free. That's how it goes. Um, now, affiliate marketing. I'll be coming back to the same point. If you have fans, if you have good audience that you build, you will definitely, you have that privilege to recommend uh, products. Like if you add link, then people are going to buy that because you have said it. On similar grounds, I'll talk about sponsored posts. Now, sponsored posts are basically you get uh, paid for writing that specific post. Now, there are three types of it. Uh, one is dedicated posts. So let's say, for example, I, I have a fashion blog and I, I'm approached by a company that, that uh, sells cosmetics. So I'm going to write a dedicated post reviewing that the face mask is good, the foundation is good, this, and you should probably try it. And viewers are going to take my word for it. Now, second way is sliding in indirectly. Now, let's say I'm in Rome, I roamed around, and I write about it. Like, oh, I went to these places and I was so tired, I was walking all day, blah, blah, blah. And at the end of the day, I came back to my room and tried on this face mask that is so soothing, it, it relaxes my skin and I feel so beautiful. Now, you have slid in that, uh, that this face mask worked for you. So indirectly, you recommended this product. And third type of sponsored post is just mentioning. Like you write uh, your post like you write any other, and then you just mention that this post is sponsored by so-and-so company and we are, thank we are thankful for your support and blah, blah, blah. So that's it. These how sponsored posts work. And again, I'm going to mention this, that you will get sponsors if you have good viewership. Now next is selling products. Now, if uh, let's say you're writing uh, long blogs, like wait, but why? You can also write ebooks. And selling those ebooks will uh, earn you good revenue. You're not really selling uh, anything physically, so it's much easier to write ebooks and sell them. Another way of selling products is merchandise, which isn't very popular in bloggers. This is more you'll find in uh, YouTubers doing that. Um, but I think it's a good way if you have uh, fans, if you have audience, then it is a really nice way to uh, sell merchandise. You can give it a try, like 50 units or pre-booking for 50 units. And if it works, for, works out for you, if people are interested, why not? But again, it's, less, uh, it's much hassle than selling e-books because then you have to look for shipping and all. But it's a good way. Now, next is membership. What if uh, I'm not into writing long content? I, I like writing small posts. That is why we have so many bloggers around. So in that case, can I sell my content? Of course, yes. If your content is, if your content is unique and if you're writing quality content, viewers will buy that content because it's your content. And you can always uh, display like certain amount uh, certain short excerpts about what, the, what they'll be buying or release for one post about it and what next post will be. So when you buy, when users purchase, they know what they are purchasing. There are various plugins that will help you uh, restrict content, various membership plugins, and linking it with products, you can make uh, users buy it. Now, uh, I've read a few blogs which say that your content should be premium content and not available elsewhere. So I slightly disagree with this because uh, if you're, let's say you're teaching, uh, writing a blog about teaching something, then uh, it's very hard to find a unique concept. Like we have so many tutorials on JavaScript, we have so many tutorials on uh, WordPress, but if users will buy it, they'll buy it for your content because they like your teaching. So it may not be, a premium content that's not available elsewhere, but it better be your content. And next is subscription. So memberships mostly work uh, for long time. Like you, uh, you take, uh, you buy my subscription for, uh, sorry, my membership uh, for a 
lifetime, say 400 euros, and you have access to all my content. But what if I don't have 400 euros? In that case, uh, subscriptions work for you. Uh, so users pay a very small amount, let's say 20 euros for a month, for a short time. On your side, you get a repetitive income every month. So you have 20 euros coming every month. Now you may say that I was getting 400 and now I'm getting 20. But if the user can't afford it, you weren't getting 400 at the very first place. So it works for both of us. And lastly, donations. Uh, it can be very difficult uh, to have sponsors at the start. So it is, it is a nice way to have donations but button on your side uh, to ask for some donation and say, hey, you can support me. And you can be, be very creative about it. Like, hey, buy me a beer, buy me a coffee, if you like. And having a donations button is very important, I feel. Now, if you get attraction from it, you can also uh, start crowdfunding. So Kickstarter or Patreon are really good sites uh, that can help. Now, all this sums up to people. The focus of this talk is basically people. You don't have to focus on money. Focus on people. Because once you have audience, that is when you will uh, gain more revenue from it. So let's talk about building audience. Firstly, content. Now when I say content, uh, I want you to be very uh, specific about it. Let's say uh, I'm thinking to blog about things I learned today. And every day I'll uh, write about things I learned. I learned WordPress today. Tomorrow I learned how to develop a simple plugin in it. Yeah, then I learned how to develop a theme. And then uh, the fourth day, I learned how to develop scramble eggs. Uh, now that is not really necessary for the users who are viewing my site. They were interested in WordPress because my three posts were about WordPress, and now they are about scramble eggs. So it is very important that you focus on a niche and uh, work on it. Secondly, social media. Now, content alone won't get your audience. If your users, if your viewers are not on your site, then get the content to your viewers. So in this case, social media will help. If your uh, blog is about photo, then share it on Instagram, then share it on uh, Facebook. If you're writing long posts, then maybe sharing an excerpt on Facebook or other uh, platforms like Twitter helps you, and so on and so forth. So um, spreading your reach to spreading your uh, reach uh, is very important. Third is consistency. Now, if you're uh, occasional about writing your blogs, you may not uh, get those viewers daily. But if you're consistent and you're writing daily, your viewers turn into subscribers. And that's how you build uh, active followers who follow you every time. Fourth point goes engagement. Now, uh, how many of you, I want to ask, reply to the comments that you get on blog or the comments that you get on your Instagram account? It is very important, even if it's a compliment. Hey, I like the post. This is very informative. It is very important that you engage with your users. <coughs> with your viewers. So you say, hey, thank you for liking my post. Uh, I'm, I appreciate you giving your time for reading it. Share on Facebook, share with your friends if you liked it so much. So indirectly, you're asking them to share more. And now, when they share, you're not just reaching out to your subscribers, but they are reaching out to more people out there. So that's how uh, it is important for you to engage. Lastly, email list. Maintaining an email list is uh, very important because just say in case you lose uh, your site, you lose access to your site and you have nothing. But you may not have to start from grade one if, you're, if you have an email list. If you lose access, you can say, hey, hello, I lose access to my site, but here's my another site and I'm working on the same thing as before. So you might subscribe me. And if they are active followers, if they are your fans, they'll definitely get back to you on your new site. So in this case, it is very important to have an email list. And there are various plugins out there uh, that, you, that will help you maintain an email list. 
So at the end, I would say um, that it will take time to generate revenue. It's not going to be instant. You, you won't start a blog tomorrow and start earning revenue. So focus on people, and money will follow. So that's all I'll say. Thank you for listening.